Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. If I stay in faith, well then what is true in the spirit man will become true in the physical realm. Jesus has provided everything. We just have to know how to appropriate it in our own lives, in our heart. When Jesus says it is done, it was done for me too. And now here's Andrew. Welcome to our Friday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. This is the end of my second week of teaching on You've Already Got It, and I'm going to continue this for another few weeks. This is a powerful teaching, and and uh, I really encourage you to please get this teaching. You can go to our website, and you can get all of these materials free of charge if you want them. If you want a hard copy book, you have to order that. We do have a package that we're offering, or we will offer the individual teaching that you'll be listening to today free of charge, but you need to go to the effort of getting this. This is a game changer. It'll change your life. I've already covered so much material, I haven't got time to go back through it. Again, that's the reason that I really encourage you to get the materials, because it's, it's building upon all of the things that I've said, and if this is the only program that you've heard, you're just getting a portion of it and it would be so much better if you got it all in its context. Yesterday, I was teaching from Hebrews chapter 4, where it says that the word preached unto the children of Israel that came out of the land of Egypt didn't profit them because they didn't mix it with faith. They had promises from God that were for their own good of a land that flowed with milk and honey, houses that were built by giants, fields that had already been cultivated, and they didn't have to remove all of the stones and everything. They had all of these great promises, but it didn't profit them because they got into unbelief. Likewise, we today have great promises about what Jesus has provided for us, but not every Christian is experiencing them because of our unbelief. And so I've been talking about that you've already got it. God's already healed you, delivered you, prospered you. Everything that you need has already been provided. You don't need to get God to do it. You need to learn to rest in what He's already done. And this is what Hebrews chapter 4 is talking about, verse 9. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. And on yesterday's program, I was sharing that this rest isn't talking about, you know, like what we often use the word rest, where you lay down and go to sleep. This says in verse 11 that you have to labor to enter into this rest. So what this is talking about, it's talking about resting in the way that when you finish something and it's complete, you rest from your labors, not because you're worn out, but because it's complete. You can't add to it. Anything that you add would actually subtract from it. It's like a lawyer says, I rest my case, not because he's worn out, but because he's presented everything. And when God rested on the seventh day of creation, it wasn't because He was tired. It was because it was complete. He created everything so completely that He anticipated anything that the human race could ever do to hurt this earth, to affect His creation, and He built into it the ability to cleanse itself, to repair itself, and all of these kind of things. I talked about all of that yesterday, and when He rested, it meant that He has never done any more creation since that original creation. He doesn't get up in the morning and create a million new cows or pigs to replace the ones that were eaten. He has built into creation the ability to procreate and to replace whatever trees die, plants die, or whatever. He's, he's done it. He, he's rested. It was so complete. He doesn't have to do anything. It's already done in advance of whatever problem may come. And the new creation of you and I, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Our new creation in our spirit, he has given us everything that we will ever need throughout all eternity. There is no problem that you can ever come up against that God hasn't already put in you the ability to deal with it and overcome it. When you have a sickness come your way, you don't have to go to God and say, Oh, God, did you hear what happened? He knew before He created you, before the foundation of the earth, 
He knew everything that was going to ever happen. And when you got born again, I've already used these verses, but in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 19 and 20, He has already put within you the same power that raised Christ from the dead. And that's more than enough to deal with your cancer, with your AIDS, with your whatever. It's already in there. GOD HAS ANTICIPATED ANY PROBLEM THAT YOU COULD EVER HAVE, AND BY GRACE, HE SUPPLIED THE NEED BEFORE THE NEED EVEN EXISTED. AND ALL WE'VE GOT TO DO IS JUST BY FAITH REACH OUT AND TAKE IT. YOU KNOW, IT GOES BACK TO ADAM AND EVE. WHEN THEY GOT HUNGRY, THEY DIDN'T HAVE TO SAY, OH, GOD, FEED ME. NO, GOD HAD ALREADY ANTICIPATED THAT THEY WOULD NEED FOOD, AND HE HAD ALREADY CREATED IT ALL. SO, DID THAT MEAN THAT THEY AUTOMATICALLY THEN JUST HAD ALL THE NOURISHMENT THAT THEY NEED? NO, BUT IT MEANS ALL THE NOURISHMENT THAT THEY WOULD EVER NEED WAS PROVIDED, BUT THEY HAD TO REACH OUT AND TAKE IT. LIKE, FOR INSTANCE, THEY WOULD HAVE TO TAKE A BANANA, AND THEY WOULD HAVE TO PEEL IT, AND THEY WOULD HAVE TO EAT IT. GOD DIDN'T INTRAVENIOUSLY JUST PUT IT INTO THEM, AND THEY AUTOMATICALLY HAD IT. NO, THEY HAD TO REACH OUT, BUT DID THEM REACHING OUT AND TAKING A BANANA MAKE GOD MAKE IT? NO, GOD HAD ALREADY CREATED IT, ANTICIPATING THEIR NEED, AND ALL THEY HAD TO DO WAS REACH OUT AND SAY THANK YOU. SEE, THIS IS A PERFECT EXAMPLE. THIS IS THE REASON THAT THESE VERSES ARE SAYING IN THE SAME WAY THAT GOD RESTED ON THE SEVENTH DAY AND SAID THAT THERE WAS STILL A REST FOR THE PEOPLE OF GOD. IT IS SYMBOLIC OF HOW YOU AND I NOW RELATE TO THE LORD. WE HAVE TO REACH OUT AND TAKE WHAT GOD HAS PROVIDED, BUT OUR STEPS OF FAITH, WHEN WE SAY, I BELIEVE THAT I'M HEALED IN THE NAME OF JESUS, THAT DOESN'T MAKE GOD HEAL US. THAT IS JUST US REACHING OUT AND TAKING WHAT GOD HAS GIVEN US AND SAYING THANK YOU. WE STILL HAVE A PART TO PLAY, BUT WE ARE NOT THE ONE WHO IS PRODUCING THE CHANGE. I'LL TELL YOU, THIS IS CRITICAL THAT YOU UNDERSTAND IT. WE NEED TO LEARN HOW TO REST IN GOD. I COULD GIVE YOU SO MANY EXAMPLES OF THIS IN MY OWN PERSONAL LIFE. Uh, MAN, GOD HAS CALLED ME TO DO THINGS THAT ARE WAY OUT THERE BEYOND ME. HE'S, YOU KNOW, JUST IN THE LAST SEVEN YEARS, WE HAVE SPENT $120 MILLION ON BUILDINGS, ON BUILDING A BIBLE COLLEGE CAMPUS AND STUFF, AND WE HAVE $23 MILLION WORTH OF INDEBTEDNESS. SO THE VAST MAJORITY OF ALL OF THAT HAS BEEN DONE DEBT-FREE IN SEVEN YEARS. WE HAVE SPENT, MAN, WHAT IS THAT? I DON'T EVEN KNOW, BUT IT'S it's LIKE 90-SOMETHING MILLION DOLLARS DEBT-FREE ABOVE MY NORMAL EXPENSES. I HAVE TO SPEND OVER A MILLION DOLLARS A MONTH TO PAY MY TELEVISION BILL. WE HAVE OVER A MILLION DOLLARS A MONTH IN SALARY. THEN WE HAVE MATERIALS THAT GO OUT, UTILITIES, TRAVEL EXPENSE, ON AND ON YOU COULD GO. It, IT'S EXPENSIVE, AND ALL OF THIS HAS COME, AND IT'S WAY BEYOND MY ABILITY TO DO THIS. BUT GOD TOLD ME TO DO IT, AND I HAVE RESTED. I HAVE SAID, FATHER, I'M TRUSTING YOU, AND YOU KNOW WHAT? I SLEEP ALL NIGHT LONG. I DON'T STAY UP AT NIGHT WORRYING ABOUT THIS STUFF. I'VE CAST MY CARE OVER ON THE LORD. I'M RESTING, AND I'M DOING THINGS. WHEN GOD SPEAKS TO ME, I'LL DO WHAT HE TELLS ME TO DO. I COMMUNICATE WITH PEOPLE. I COMMUNICATE WITH OUR PARTNERS. AND uh, THERE'S THINGS THAT I DO. I AM NOT GOOFING OFF. I AM SEEKING GOD. I AM LABORING TO REST. IT TAKES EFFORT TO REST. AND I KNOW THAT THIS SOUNDS CONTRARY, ESPECIALLY IF YOU DON'T UNDERSTAND THAT THIS REST ISN'T INACTIVITY. IT IS JUST BEING CALM AND TRUSTING IN GOD AND NOT WORRYING ABOUT THINGS, CASTING YOUR CARE OVER UPON THE LORD. AND HE TELLS US HERE THAT WE HAVE TO LABOR TO REST. IT TAKES BEING IN THE WORD. IT TAKES A RELATIONSHIP WITH GOD, PRAYING AND SEEKING GOD. IT TAKES EFFORT IN ORDER TO BE ABLE TO REST AND JUST LET GOD DEAL WITH THESE THINGS. I KNOW, BECAUSE I'VE HAD TO LABOR TO REST. AND I DON'T DO IT PERFECTLY, BUT I AM RESTING, TRUSTING, RELYING UPON THE LORD AND NOT TAKING THE CARE ABOUT ALL OF THE THINGS THAT ARE HAPPENING UPON MYSELF. DID YOU KNOW YOU CAN LIVE THIS WAY? AND THIS, THIS IS TO ME THE HEART OF WHAT I'M TALKING ABOUT RIGHT HERE, THAT GOD'S ALREADY DONE IT. HE'S ALREADY DONE EVERYTHING. YOU AREN'T TRYING TO GET HIM TO HEAL YOU. YOU ARE RESTING IN WHAT HAS ALREADY BEEN DONE FOR YOU. AND THAT'S HUGE. 
THAT IS A GREAT DIFFERENCE. YOU KNOW, I WANT TO PLAY THIS LITTLE TESTIMONY WITH YOU. I THINK IT WILL ILLUSTRATE WHAT WE'VE TALKED ABOUT, BUT JULIANNE HARTMAN IS A FRIEND OF MINE, AND JULIANNE HAD MULTIPLE SICKNESSES AND DISEASES. Uh, I THINK SHE HAD SPENT OVER $300,000 ON DOCTOR BILLS AND MEDICINE AND THINGS, AND SHE WAS GETTING INCREASINGLY WORSE. AND WHEN SHE HEARD THIS MESSAGE ABOUT HOW YOU'VE ALREADY GOT IT AND THAT GOD HAS ALREADY DONE IT, WELL, SHE STARTED LABORING TO ENTER INTO THAT REST. SHE STARTED GETTING INTO THE WORD. SHE STARTED LISTENING TO TEACHING. SHE WALKED THROUGH HER HOUSE SPEAKING TO HER BODY AND DOING THINGS, BUT SHE WAS RESTING THE WHOLE TIME SHE WAS LABORING. HER WORK WASN'T TO GET GOD TO DO SOMETHING, BUT TO CONVINCE HERSELF AND ESTABLISH HER HEART IN THESE TRUTHS. I THINK THAT THIS WILL REALLY BLESS YOU. SO WATCH THIS TESTIMONY OF JULIE ANN HARTMAN. FEAR PLAYED A BIG ROLE IN MY LIFE. IT WAS, IT WAS TORMENTING. MY FATHER WAS AN ALCOHOLIC. HE WAS A MEDICINAL DRUG ADDICT. WE NEVER KNEW HOW HE WAS GOING TO COME HOME. IT ALL CULMINATED TO ONE NIGHT. MY MOM HAD MADE A DINNER FOR HIM, AND HE DIDN'T LIKE THE DINNER. HE PICKED UP THE TABLE, THREW IT AGAINST THE WALL, STARTS SCREAMING AND YELLING, GOES TO MY MOM WITH A KNIFE TO HER THROAT, AND WE'RE SCREAMING, SAYING, PLEASE DON'T, PLEASE DON'T, DON'T DO THAT TO HER, DON'T KILL HER. SO HE WENT INTO THE BACK ROOM FOR A MINUTE. MY MOM SAID, GIRLS, GET YOUR COATS, WE'RE GOING NOW. Julianne was both a fitness instructor and the wife of a Hollywood producer. But neither exercise nor a fast-paced L.A. lifestyle could keep her from the fear that took root in her life at childhood. This fear eventually took the form of fibromyalgia, an incurable disease that causes widespread muscle pain, fatigue, and mood swings. This is the healing journey of Julianne Hartman. There was so much pain in my body and it came out of nowhere. I started with a lot of lower back pain. I started with pain in my legs, pain in my hands, and then it felt like I had the flu 24-7. We were church-going people. We knew that Jesus Christ promised healing. We knew that uh, healing was ours, that kind of thing. But there was such an emergency atmosphere around it. The first thing was we have to go to the doctor. They said I had lupus. They said I had fibromyalgia. Fibromyalgia just doesn't come on you. It comes from a lot of years of a lot of emotional abuse on yourself. I chose exercise to rid me of anxiety and fear. That's why I kept a job and classes and dancing and all this stuff and working out till two in the morning that I wouldn't have time to feel fear or anxiety or anything. So I just kept running faster and faster and faster. The older I got, the faster I would run. I was used to working out five, six hours a day, six days a week. When I started not feeling well, I couldn't do any of that. So it was really shortly after she stopped, I started noticing a huge change. The word despair is a word I would use. There was like a despair that came around her, and I don't know where that came from. In the mornings, he would leave me as my head would be in my hands, and I'd just be crying. And then he would come home, and he would find me in the same position. I thought I was losing my daughter, and um, it was just, it was hard. I was an actress, so I was good at acting. And when the girls would get home from school, I'd say, okay, what'd you do today? Like, tell me about your day. I don't think I heard any of it. Because I was in so much pain, and I was feeling so sick. And then the fear always, because I wasn't feeling good, and I was like, God, I hope I can make it through this day, kind of thing. My day planner was filled with doctor appointments. $300,000 on alternative doctors, holistic doctors. They just kept saying, we don't know what to do. Here, take this pill. Here, take this. This went on for three years. Meanwhile, I was going to every healing line that I could. I would say, God, why am I not getting healed? What is wrong? Why are you not healing me? Why? What I do? What do I need to do to get healed? I don't understand. The healing wasn't coming. The medicine, whatever she would take, wasn't working. She was crying every day. And she said, I think you should leave me.
Had I not had Christ in my life, I probably would have left. But I know that perfect love casts out fear. He said, I made a commitment to you, and I will never leave you. Whatever we needed to do, wherever she needed to go, whatever we needed to pray, when you've done all to stand, we had to stand. Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on... And so I was home a lot, and I would leave the TV on, and it would constantly play every ministry possible. Well, this man came on, and he was really boring. And I don't know what the teaching was, but it was him saying that there was a man that had Parkinson's. And so Andrew says, so I say to him, just tell your hand to stop shaking. And he said, okay. So he said, hand, stop shaking. And it did. So I'm watching this going with my remote control ready to turn him off. What? But there was something about it though that was really like just caught me. I went online and I started looking at the website. Well, what is this guy about? Like, who is he? And that was it. I watched her as she watched every Andrew episode. She downloaded everything online she could get. Those healing journeys were amazing. I watched them over and over. I watched Nikki's probably 50 times. All the symptoms that she had of being sensitive to cleaning solutions, hair products, lotions, perfumes, I couldn't be around anything that had a smell. She was the same way. And to watch that girl sit in a bedroom at the end that was painted was like a miracle. Title, God Wants You Well. We've already dealt with the fact that healing is a part of Christ's atonement, which means that it's not optional. When I listen to God Wants You Well, I'm like, wait a minute, and you've already got it? I'm like, wait. This isn't God holding out on me. This is me not receiving what God already did for me. There was a two week period where I was like, that's it. I am not moving out of this house. I'm canceling everything and I'm just gonna listen from the time my kids go to school till the time I've gotta go pick them up. And I would sit on my kitchen table from eight till 2.30 and just listen over and over and over. For two weeks I did that. I started walking through my hallways. And I'm telling you, if my dogs could talk what they witnessed, I walked through those hallways going, in the name of Jesus, stop being numb. Numbness, you are dead. You get out of my body now, in the name of Jesus. Get out of my body. Pain, back pain, get out of my body. Whatever it was, headache, you know, brain. You are a perfect brain. God gave me a perfect brain. You need to function the way you were made. I don't care what's been spoken over me, what anybody told me, what anybody said I had. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke all of that. And body, you come back to life now. And I just kept doing that over and over. And I'd walk through my house. Then I'd go back to all the scriptures that I wrote down where Andrew had walked me through. It's funny, when you live with something for so long and you're so used to seeing it, you don't really notice when it starts to change until you like realize like one day, hey, she's not complaining about her knees anymore. And then I'd say, hey, she's crying a lot less. Was that a smile on her face? There was a smile there. She would laugh. I hadn't heard her laugh in probably years. And I, when you hear your wife laugh after so long, that is just the most amazing thing. What I always say is like, it was a progressive healing. But the only reason why it was progressive is because I made it progressive. You know, if you can't trust your father, how are you gonna trust a God that you can't see? It was my dad, I just couldn't trust him. And I think that that's kind of where it all stemmed from. It wasn't just the healing on the outside. It was teaching me about who I was in Christ. And that was the missing link. It was a bit of a journey, but at the end of the journey, my daughter was back. Julianne's healing has inspired her family to discover all God has for them. Every day, they renew their minds to God's Word, accompanied by the teachings of Andrew Womack Ministries and Karis Bible College. I work out to Andrew, Butch works out to Andrew. We have him on our computers, we have him on our phones, we have him on our cars. I always knew in my heart that my kids would go to Karis Bible College. I know that establishing a firm foundation in Christ as a young adult, like that's just the best place to do it. I know the creative arts school is opening up soon, like the third year. And so taking like my passion in arts and creativity and putting that 
with my faith and then being able to go to a school where they tailor right to that is really exciting. The Hollywood industry is an industry that everybody wants you to fail, but when you don't fail, they wonder why isn't this person failing? Why is he succeeding? Because of the prosperity I've had, I've been able to point them to Jesus Christ. And that's through Andrew. We started listening to the teaching of don't limit God times 10. And man, if that doesn't make you want to run down the street with your hands up in victory going, I'm doing it. I am not going to limit God anymore. Andrew said that God said to him, you're limiting me by your small thinking. And I thought, I'm going to apply this to my career. So we started the NOOG Network, it's N-O-O-G Network, and we call it a safe place for kids. What we want to do is the money that comes from the network is going right into the dorms, after the dorms, whatever else Andrew is. I am so on board with his vision. When you're a partner and you give into that, anyone who gets saved as a result of that ministry, that goes on your heavenly account. That's the exciting part. The Noog Network is just one of the many ways the Hartmans are advancing God's kingdom. Their nonprofit organization, Hartman House, builds homes and provides food, education, and spiritual growth to those fighting poverty all over the world. And to come out on the other side, and the very first thing he told me was don't let your heart be troubled. Going back to this same principle I was just talking about. The Hartmans also hold weekly Bible studies in L.A where they share Andrew's messages with their community. Through her experience, Julianne feels especially called to encourage women to apply Christ's atonement in every area of their lives. The world dictates to you that as a woman, when you get older and you go through menopause, basically you become this emotional crazy person and then you, your insides dry up and you die basically. And it's really important for me to talk about this because I know that through the Word of God, through Andrew's teaching, I'm not talking just one teaching, I'm talking about all his teachings. He will show you who you are, even though he's a man, and he doesn't speak about menopause, he doesn't speak about the female issues, but it doesn't matter. He speaks the Word of God, which covers all of that. And that's important for women my age to know. We don't have to succumb to what the world says is supposed to happen to us as we get older. As Julianne and her family continue to change the world, they never forget that their story was made possible by the friends and partners of Andrew Womack Ministries. Because of you, Julianne is now living her life fearless and free of fibromyalgia. Started adding up all those bills. They were over $300,000. But Andrew's teaching was free. Man, I believe that blessed you. And you know, this really is a perfect example of what I'm talking about, that you have to labor to rest. Julie Ann was trying to do all of these things, praying, God, what do I need to do? And when she found out that she was already healed, that God had already done it, that the same power that raised Jesus from the dead already lived on the inside of her, then she started walking and speaking to her body and resisting the devil. There was work, but it was work to rest.